What's up guys, Chicks here from Chicks Tech Reviews. So this is the Black Shark 4. It's a dedicated gaming smartphone and it does have everything you would expect to find in a gaming smartphone such as a liquid cooling system. It has 144Hz refreshed, 6.67 inch AMOLED display with a 720Hz touch response which is definitely one of the fastest touch responses we have seen in a smartphone to date. This is also powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 870 which is a 7 nanometer octa-core chip clocked at around 2.4 gigahertz and this is the 8 gigabyte DDR5 variant with 128 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage and guess what people this smartphone is priced at only around 360 pounds which is an absolute bargain price when we compare it to the likes of ROG5 or Redmi Magic 6. And quick look at what you get inside the box so we have a user manual we've also got some Black Shark stickers we have a hard case included as well, USB charging cable, and you're getting 120 watt hypercharger included in the box, which promises 100% charge in less than 20 minutes. And you know, we're gonna have to test out that charging speed very soon. I'll quickly show you how the smartphone case looks. Yes, I've got no tripod. I can't believe I'm shooting without a tripod. It's a one-handed operation, and I'll try and keep it as stable as I possibly can. So always nice to have a case included with your smartphone to get you started. So let's talk about the smartphone itself. Now last year's Black Shark 3 had a 90 Hertz display and you can see that's been upgraded to a beautiful looking 144 Hertz AMOLED. And the display is no doubt beautiful to look at with a peak brightness of around 1300 nits. You do have HDR 10 plus. So it's basically an entertainment hub in your hands and both movies and games look amazing on that large AMOLED display. Now the Black Shark 4 is made from a plastic back with a very interesting X design, which I do like, but as you can see, it's pretty much a fingerprint magnet. Now the phone is quite thick at around 10.4 millimeters and it weighs 210 grams. At the bottom of the smartphone, you will find a single microphone, a headphone jack, USB type C port, and a single speaker. On the top, you've got a power button in the middle and that's also your fingerprint sensor and I'll quickly show you that in action. So fairly fast and accurate. Now you also have some impressive looking magnetic triggers. So what you're doing is you're opening the latch and the triggers open themselves. Let me do that again. So they're called master triggers. Let me just show you one side. Very satisfying clicking noise. And you also get that digital noise as well. And when you're not in a game, these triggers can actually be customized. So the left one, you can see I've set as screenshots and the right trigger I've set to one handed mode. So you can have these triggers set to anything you like. They feel very satisfying to open and close and, and they're definitely giving you a very nice feedback every time you press it. So when you're playing games, you're definitely gonna get an advantage using those triggers. Now on the top of the smartphone, we have another speaker. And on the side, you can just about see a small volume rocker and your SIM tray. And I'm gonna quickly show you the SIM tray. So here is the SIM tray. You can see it's dual 5G nano SIM tray. This phone does not have any micro SD expansion. You're just getting a dual 5G nano SIM slot. Furthermore, this smartphone does have a dual battery system. So combined, that's 4,500 milliamp hours. And of course, you do get that 120 watt hyper fast charger included in the box, which means 100% charge in less than 20 minutes. And that is an insane charging speed. So yeah, dual 5G SIM support, Wi-Fi 6. You've got the headphone jack and you've got built-in NFC. Quick look at the graphic settings. You can play COD Mobile on very high with frame rate maxed out. Okay, so before we start a game, I just want to show you, you can swipe in from any side and you will see the FPS, you can see the internet connection, and it will show you the CPU load as well. And you've got a whole bunch of options that you can configure. You even got brightness and volume right there as well. So very nice touch. So that's your Shark Space UI. Now let's just go ahead and play a game. Triggers have already been configured. You can see when I press the top one, let's aim, and you got shoot right there. Configuring the master triggers, all you do is tap there, you can see I've set A and B 
So A being that side, B being this side, master trigger left and right done. So if we close it now, and here we go. Yeah, 144 hertz refresh does make a difference. I didn't expect that guy to be standing there and I've been sniped from really far. And touch response is also very fast. So every time you press that trigger, you know you're gonna be slightly faster than the competition, which definitely gives you the edge. All right, we're gonna do something here. Let's go up the stairs. We've lost B. This helps. Let's go. Goodbye enemies. So this year I've been using the ROG, I've been using Red Magic, and now I've got the Black Shark. And these triggers are absolutely beautiful. Um, playing with these triggers gives you a super advantage, uh, no doubt about that. Some even may call it cheating, but me personally, it adds to the enjoyment of the game. So when you're pressing those triggers, it gives you a very console-like feel. Now, along with that beautiful display, I was actually blown away by the speakers. You've got side firing stereo speakers. You've got one at the bottom of the smartphone and one at the top and the speakers sound insane. Yes, they support high res audio and you've got DTSX. And I'll give you a quick taste. So incredible sounds and visuals. So a complete entertainment device in your hands. Now let's talk about the cameras. And now on the back we have a triple camera setup. So 48 megapixel primary. You also get an eight megapixel wide angle lens. And to finish that one off, you get a five megapixel macro. And on the front, you can see in the middle, a tiny hole punch camera. It is a 20 megapixel selfie camera. Now here's a quick look at the camera menus. So you've got pro mode, video, photo, portrait, and more. Under more, you can see short video, slow motion, 48 megapixel mode. You've got vlog, night, panorama, and time-lapse. So that's your 48 megapixel mode there. Ultra HD mode is active. You've got your usual filters. Now, if we just quickly jump to video mode, I just wanna show you that you can shoot a maximum of 4K at 60 frames per second. And if we flip the camera, and now you get to see my fancy tripod system. It's just a whole bunch of juice cartons. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm in a totally different location and I had to make do with what I have. So maximum resolution, front-facing camera, 1080p at 30 frames per second. And while we're here, I'll just quickly give you guys a wave. So photo mode, you can zoom in two times and you've got your ultra wide angle lens as well. Let's find a few subjects and take a few shots. Yeah, 30 frames per second front facing camera. Local park is raining. Hope the fun can survive the rain. Oh, fresh air. Feels good always. And this is what you can expect in terms of video quality, stabilization, full HD. And I'm at my local park. It's a it's raining. 
I'm at my local park. It is raining. It's nice to get out. I swear. I love early morning. 6 a.m. walks. I don't care if it's raining. It just feels good. So this is full HD video recording with the Black Shark 4 front facing camera. So rear camera is now active. We are shooting 4K at 60 frames per second. And guess what guys, we have image stabilization. And it looks ultra smooth on the viewfinder. So I'm gonna do a quick jog, light jog, to see if the stabilization is any good. And on screen, it looks really stable. Let's try zooming in. I'm gonna zoom in now 1.4 times. 2.8 times and five times digital zoom while we are shooting 4k 60. Now this smartphone is running Android version 11 with Joy UI 12.5 on top. Now the OS does feel quite snappy in operation and you do have a lot of customization options and I'll show you a few of them. So your home screen can be completely customized and layout, your icon sizes. So everything can be customized, which is pretty neat. You've got themes, you've got wallpapers, notification center and control center that can also be customized to your preference. And here's your always on display, which I've got switched off at the moment, but you can have a custom image or there are loads of presets that you can choose. And right at the bottom, you've got your Black Shark presets as well. I was gonna show you this in action. So if we grab one of the Black Shark presets, again, fully customizable, I'm just gonna apply it, switch it on, and show you it in action. So that's your always on display. Um, I also wanna quickly show you that the refresh rate can be changed. So if you didn't want 144 hertz you can drop it down to 90 or you can go standard 60 hertz so it's good that you do have the option also I want to quickly show you the performance manager i thought this was a great feature it shows you your cpu load big core little core memory and then you have other stuff like process management network settings endurance op optimization quite an extensive range of customization options and settings but that's not all if you go to special features you can see you have more so you've got video toolbox, lighting effects, magic window, second space. So I'll quickly show you the lighting effects. Every time I get an incoming call, the sides will give me that sparking effect. You can also have lighting effects while music is playing. So you have a choice of two and the second wave flow is my favorite. Furthermore, you have magic window. There's your magic window right there. So a refined, smooth experience from Joy UI 12.5. I'm sure the 144 hertz makes a big difference as well. So there you have it guys, that was the Black Shark 4. And my experience so far has been very good. If we talk about performance, we achieved just over 3,300 in Geekbench multi-score and 619 in Antutu benchmark tests, meaning the Black Shark 4 achieves position 15 in my top smartphone chart of 2021, giving you a similar benchmark performance to the iPhone 12 Pro Max which is certainly an interesting result, especially at this price point. And of course, you can view all of my latest charts online at chigstech.com and read them at your leisure. Now the Black Shark 4 has a great looking AMOLED display, great contrast and brightness supporting HDR 10 plus. Gaming performance is pretty good. You can play COD Mobile at around 120 FPS max and on very high graphics. PUBG Mobile achieved a maximum of 90 FPS. So I never really got to experience 144 hertz gaming as I could not find a game that supported it. But nevertheless, the gaming experience was very good and the magnetic triggers takes it to another level. Now, if you use this as a regular smartphone, you can achieve a full day battery with normal to medium usage. But as a gaming phone, you're only going to be able to game for around four to five hours max before needing the charger. Now, fortunately, you're getting 120 watt hypercharger and it's insanely fast it will get you from 0 to 100 in under 20 minutes so bottom line the black shark 4 offers an excellent price per performance ratio it has a unique set of physical magnetic shoulder buttons for gaming and a whole host of gaming features to enhance your experience including the sandwich liquid cooling system now you do get a fast bright 144 hertz amoled panel great sounding stereo speakers insanely fast charging and a surprisingly good camera performance 
for both videos and photos. Now, the only thing I found is the limited support for HDR gaming, meaning you don't get to take full advantage of that display. So no games ran anywhere close to 144 hertz. The maximum I could achieve was 120 hertz with COD Mobile. And furthermore, there is no Gorilla Glass protection and definitely not the best battery life for a gaming smartphone, although they tried to make up for it with an insanely fast hypercharger. But with all that being said, it is still a very enjoyable gaming smartphone and for the price, it offers a pretty decent sustained overall performance that will not disappoint. But as it stands, definitely a great overall gaming smartphone for the price. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.